cover this stuff. And I am going to present us with the next chapter stuff so you guys can do your homework. But that's going to be kind of, this is really in-depth stuff. We really need to make sure we understand not only these definitions and not only where we can get them from an equation, but how, oh, how, also how they relate to on the graph. So I asked you to write the zeros of the polynomial with the multiplicity. So if you guys remember, the zeros, or the real zeros, are the x-intercepts, correct? Yes? I would really prefer if I had everybody looking up here without writing something down or something. I want to really make sure everybody understands that the x-intercepts are the real zeros. So for number one, I'm just going to write a solution set of all my zeros. Now, I don't care about the y, act, the y coordinate, because what is the y coordinate the same? It's always 0, right? So I just care about the x coordinate. So that's negative 3, 0, and 2. Now, the other thing that they did ask is include multiplicity. Well, remember, the only thing we talked about multiplicity, or at least for in a graph, but we talked on, or on a graph, we know that when the multiplicity is even, right, that the graph bounces. When the gra multiplicity is odd, we know the graph crosses. Now, I don't really know what the multiplicity is. The multiplicity could be 2, 4, 6, 8, but I know that multiplicity is even, correct? So what I'm just going to write for right now is I'm just going to write even, odd, and odd. Because they cross and cross, so I know those two zeros have an odd multiplicity. And I know this one bounces, so I know it has an even multiplicity. If I had the equation, I would know what the multiplicity is. I don't have the equation, though. So I can't assume that the multiplicity is something. And I'll explain um, when we get to this in a little bit. Yes? Why did you put zeros on? Because it crosses at 0. Right? All right. Step number two, determine the degree and the leading coefficients. Now, there's two ways that we talked about how to find the degree. And when we looked at there are two ways to find the de degree, um, Deanna, you said the one way was to count all of the what? Sorry, one. No. <coughs> one way is to found, count all the x-intercepts, right? Count all the x-intercepts, you would say there's one, two, three. This has a degree of three, correct? That is one way to do it. Um, however, the other way, what you just said, was to count all the turning points. Because if you guys remember the relationship between the zero or the degree and the turning points, the number of turning points was one less than the degree, correct? The number of turning points was one less than the degree. So if I count all the turning points, if I add one, that will give me the degree. So you can see this graph is increasing, and then it decreases. It's decreasing and then increasing. So these are two turning points. So I have one, two, three turning points. So if I add one, that tells me the degree is four. So the degree is equal to four. Now, you might say, well, Mr. McGo, then how does it have three zeros? Well, remember, ladies and gentlemen, you can have your zeros. If you have a multiplicity that's even, that means that zero occurs twice, right? So in reality, it's like this could occur twice, 3 and 4. So it can satisfy those zeros. Now, the next thing is we need to determine the leading coefficient. Is that leading coefficient positive or negative? So again, we look at it and we say, all right, is the graph opening up or opening down? Well, you can see that they're both falling left, falling right. We know the degree is even. So when you look at your end behavior and we see that they're both falling left, then we determine that the degree has to be negative, because that's when it falls left, falls right. All right, step number three, write the polynomial in factored form. We've already done this. We've already done this, so I'm just going to kind of quickly do this. We've already written the polynomial in factored form. Um, that's what we did on your homework last night. So if you know the zeros, can you write them as factors? Yes? OK. So step number three is y equals I could do this as x plus 3 um, times x times x minus 2. Is anybody confused on why they're the opposite sign? Anybody want me to re-explain that? Yes. Well, remember, what, how did we do these problems? You set all of your zeros. I'll do one of them. You set them equal to x, right? Then you, at, then you set them equal to 0, right? And then you write them in the factor form. Yes. 
Yep, so I'm just going to explain that yet. I'm not done yet. So in number three, we can write this in there. However, there's a couple things that did change. First of all, we always like to write the x kind of in front, OK? Um, and what, what else did we talk about? We had a 0 that had an even multiplicity, right? Yes? And that 0 was negative 3. So the factor, if all the rest of them are odd, that means all of their multiplicities, though, are also going to have to add to our degree of 4. So this would have to be 1, 1, and then remember this was even, so it had to be 2. Do you guys see how those multiplicities all add to our 4? Right? And that is even, which satisfies us. And then the last thing, we don't really know what the leading coefficient is. The leading coefficient could be a number, but we know that the leading coefficient has to be negative. So you have to include a negative right there. <coughs> okay? That is everything you guys already know. Yes? We counted, we determined the number of turning points was 1, 2, 3. And remember, the degree is always one more than the number of turning points. Okay? Or, Michaela, you could also just count the number of real zeros, 1, 2, 3. And since this was even, that means that it had a multiplicity of 2, which gave us 4. Because 2, 2 occurs twice, 3 and 4. Yes? Uh, how did you make x negative? Because the leading coefficient was negative. We don't know what the value is. The value could be 4, value could be 10. We don't know what the value is. We just know it's negative. So that's why I put a negative there. OK? Huh? Yeah? Doesn't that change the sign of the to Well, I mean, you could distribute, but it's not going to change. No, you're just multiplying the whole polynomial. You're just multiplying this by, when you multiply a whole polynomial times negative, it's like saying negative 3 times 4. Well, that's the same thing as negative 3 times 4. So you can just make that first term negative. You're not, distri you're not distributing the negative to everything. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? So the last thing I want to cover is absolute max, absolute min. And this is new for you. So absolute max and absolute min. The absolute max and the absolute min is basically going to be the maximum point or minimum point of your graph. So we looked at this graph. Does this graph have a point that we'd probably say is like the maximum, like the highest point on the graph? Yeah. Yes. And what is that point? One comma five. five. Now, when we're talking, how did you know that that was the highest? Were you looking at the x values or the y values when you were looking at the highest point? Y. The y values. So there's kind of two different ways. Depends on how this question might be asked. So for question number four, if I'm saying what is the absolute maximum, I might, I'm going to abbreviate with this with absolute. They might ask you for it as a point. So they might say y, 1, 5. Or they might say, what is actually just the value of the app? What is the absolute value? Well, that is going to be the y coordinate or the y value of 5. Okay? So they could ask you for where does, the, where does the absolute value exist that you'd provide the point, or they could ask for the value. So there's two different ways, just kind of two different answers. Depends on it. Um, really kind of depends on the question. Then I could also talk about the absolute minimum. Oops, that was max. If I ask you, what about the absolute minimum? Well, the absolute minimum is going to be the absolute lowest minimum point on this graph. This graph continues to go down. Is there going to be an absolute lowest minimum? Yes? So it would be uh, negative 1, 2. Well, that, is that the lowest point on the graph? Is this point lower? Is this point lower? Well, it's not technically being fitted because we're looking for a value. We're just going to say there is no absolute minimum. Because infinity is really not a value, right? It's really it's not something you can contain. So we just say none. Then we talk about relative. The relative max is going to be basically the easiest way to kind of look at this is wherever there's a turning point, if that's a high point, we call that a relative max. Wherever there's a turning point and that's a low point, we call that the relative min. So is this, this is the maximum point, right? But you guys can see this is another kind of little maximum in that little area, right? Do you guys see how that's like a little, little maximum? So we call that a relative max, which is negative 3, 0. And then relative min, relative min would be uh, negative 1, negative 2. Okay. Why did you use one? Huh? 
why didn't i use what